In the previous video, we started a chi-square goodness of fit test um, to decide if the distribution of housing options um, for MSIT students was really the same as the UGA population. So we're comparing to these values um, that we know for the UGA population to see how well they fit our sample of MSIT students. So that's why it's a goodness of fit test. Um, and we had calculated a chi-square statistic. Um, so we got chi-square is 37.5686. So we know that larger chi-squared statistics give us stronger evidence against the null hypothesis. But that still leaves us with this question of how large. How large does the chi-squared statistic need to be to convince us that the null hypothesis isn't true? So we need something to compare it to, and that's where the chi-squared distribution comes in. So the chi-squared distribution is a way to model all the different values of chi-square that you would expect to get. Um, and just like we saw with the normal and the t-distribution, we're using this to model the null hypothesis. So it's the values of chi-square that you'd expect if the null hypothesis were actually true. Right, so this gives us something to compare to. And kind of like the t-distribution, the chi-square distribution has different versions depending on its degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom isn't related to the sample size when you're talking about chi-square. Um, instead, it's the number of categories. So specifically, it's the number of categories minus one. So in this case, we had three categories. We had off-campus, we had Greek and we had on campus. So it's going to be 3 minus 1 is our degrees of freedom. So we're looking at a chi squared distribution with two degrees of freedom, and we can use that to figure out how common it is to get chi squared equals 37. So I think before we even calculate it, you can look at this distribution and see, oh, Chi-squared equals 37 really wouldn't happen if the null hypothesis were true, right? It would be extremely unlikely. Um, but let me go ahead and show you how to do this in jump. Okay, so let's pull up our jump distribution calculator, teaching modules distribution calculator. And I'm going to change it from normal to chi-square. My degrees of freedom is 2, so you'll see the shape changes based on the degrees of freedom. And I want to see how likely it is to get our chi-square statistic. So here where it says value, I'm going to put in 37.5686. And I'm going to pick greater than here because we said larger chi-square statistics means stronger evidence. So we'll always pick greater than for a chi-square. And we can see that we've got this really, really small probability here, right? It seems like it would be extremely unlikely to get this chi-square statistic, um, so we have a very small p-value. Okay, so let's record what we did in the notes. We put in our statistic, 37.5686. We picked greater than. You're always going to pick greater than for a chi-square um, because larger chi-square statistics mean stronger evidence. And then the probability that we got was, not surprisingly, very, very small, less than 0 .0001. So this number right here, this is our p-value. We have a very small p-value. Okay, so how do we interpret that p-value? So there's blanks in the notes, um, but to give you an idea of what your options are, I'll go ahead and pull up a slide here. Okay, so our p-value is extremely small, um, so go ahead and pause the video and think about how you would interpret that p-value. So p-values measure how likely we'd be to get results like ours if the null hypothesis were true. So in this context, we're saying if the distribution of housing choices for MSIT students were really the same, oops, my pen, were really the same as UGA students overall, 
then sample results like ours would be extremely unlikely. So we're saying if the null hypothesis were true, then results like ours would be unlikely because we have such a small p-value. So to use that to draw a conclusion, we're going to compare to our alpha level. So our p-value is definitely smaller than our alpha. Um, so we say that we have sufficient evidence to conclude. And remember, you're always trying to conclude the alternative hypothesis. So in this case, there's sufficient evidence to conclude that the distribution of housing choices for MSIT students is different from the overall UGA population. So that's one way that we can calculate a p-value. We can do the chi-square statistic by hand and then just use the distribution calculator to get a p-value. Um, but we can also have jump do the whole thing um, using analyze distribution. And the instructions for this are given on your reference sheet. Um, so let me show you how to do that. So usually you have a data set to download um, as a starting point in jump, but it's easy enough to do this one on our own. So we're going to do file new table, new data table. And we're going to make two columns here. Um, the first one is our variable name, so housing. And we're going to put in the three different categories for housing. So we had off campus, Greek, and on campus. And then we're going to make a second category for the counts. So this is where we're going to put how many are in each category. So we had 56 off campus, 15 in Greek housing, and 7 on campus. Okay, so we'll do analyze distribution and put your main variable housing in the Y box. Put your counts in the frequency box and click OK. And I still like to stack. Okay, so our next step here is to do test probabilities. So click the little down arrow next to the variable name and choose test probabilities. So notice that this is giving us the sample proportions for each of these categories. And we're going to compare that to the null hypothesis. Um, another thing to be careful about is that the default here is to put them in alphabetical order. So we've got to be careful to match things up. So we were expecting 5.5% in Greek housing, so we're going to do 0 0.055. Um, for off-campus, we were expecting 0.66 or 66%. And then on-campus, we were expecting 0.285. Okay, so this is going to calculate our chi-square statistic. So you can see here where it says Pearson chi-square. That's the one we calculated earlier. Our degrees of freedom is 2. And then here where it says probability greater than chi-square, that's our p-value. So we've got that same really small p-value. One last thing, let's summarize what we just did. So we created two columns, housing that has our variable um, categories in it, and then we put in our counts, 56, 15, and 7. Um, we put our main variable housing in the y, we put counts in the frequency box, and this step isn't always necessary. Um, the reason that we had to take this step um, is because our data were given in a table. So if you had just a long data set with one row per person, you wouldn't have to do this step. This is only when it's given in a table. Okay, um, our estimated probability, sorry, I should have printed these because they would be given to you in jump. Um, 0 0.19, 0 0.72, and 0 0.09. Those are our sample proportions. So when I actually collected data from my MSIT students last year, um, these were the proportions who lived in each housing category. And then this I typed in, this is from the null hypothesis. So this is the UGA population value, um, and our null hypothesis would be that MSIT is the same as the overall UGA population. We do have to be careful because the default here um, is to put these categories into alphabetical order. So it can actually be really easy um, to put things in the wrong place. So just be careful of that. Um, and then all we had to do after we followed those steps was to pick the Pearson's chi-square. So Pearson's chi-square, that's just the name of that chi-square formula that we did. We're not going to use the likelihood ratio one.
and then our p-value, the way it was um, sort of marked in the output, was the probability greater than chi-square. And that, thinks, that makes sense if you think about how we calculated it earlier, right? We found um, the probability of getting values greater than our chi-square statistic, so that's just a way of describing the p-value. So either way you calculate it, you get this very small p-value, so that means that we have very strong evidence that the distribution of housing choices for MSIT students is actually different than UGA students overall.